We're in Bodega Bay, California right now to take a look at the San Andreas Fault Zone, which should be right beneath me, give or take about 100 yards. Only problem is right here, it's covered by all these uh, surficial sediments. There's a road here, it's hard to see anything. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the nearest outcrops and see what they can tell us about the San Andreas Fault. Let's go take a look. All right, so if we look at the landward side of the fault, the rocks that we have here are of the Franciscan assemblage, which are mostly metamorphosed marine rocks dating to the Mesozoic. So these rocks are originally sedimentary rocks, and although they've been jumbled a lot uh, around through metamorphism, so this doesn't completely apply, but technically, through the principle of lateral continuity, we'd expect them to continue outwards towards the nearest landform which in this case is just across the bay at Bodega Head. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over there and see if the rocks are similar or not, and if they are broken up by something. Hint, hint, wink, wink. We're at Bodega Head, which forms the seaward side of Bodega Bay. And so what we're gonna do now is look if the rocks here are similar to the Franciscan assemblage like we saw over on the other side of the fault. So let's see what we got. Lo and behold, it's not. It's not like the rocks that we saw in the Franciscan assemblage at all. What we have here is granodiorite, which is the uh, type of rock that your mom's countertop is probably made out of, even though she says it's granite. Point is, it's totally different, very different formation history. So granodiorite is a plutonic rock, meaning that it formed um, way underground by the cooling of magma. So we can see some large um, feldspar crystals. Um, we see quartz. There's also some biotite mica in here as well. And if you look, you can see the individual um, crystals that grew as the magma solidified. So we have a totally different rock. How can we explain it when it's so close to the other rock? The explanation here, as is often the case in geology, is a fault, and not just any fault, the San Andreas Fault System, which forms a transform plate boundary in this area. What that means is that two plates come together here. Instead of going up or down, they move together side by side. Specifically, it is a right lateral strike slip fault, meaning that from the perspective of one side of the fault, the other side appears to be moving to the right. This means that everything on the left side of the San Andreas is heading northward. So what this all means is that Bodega Head uh, is not from here at all. It must have originated somewhere to the south. Now, the closest area that you can find this similar granodiorite is the Tehachapi Mountains in Southern California. That's about 300 miles or 500 kilometers away from here. Now we can calculate about how long that Bodega Head has been moving away from where it probably originated. Um, through the slip rate or how, um, how much the San Andreas Fault has been moving per year, which is about three to four centimeters on average for any given year. Now, assuming that that stayed about the same rate over time, this thing has been on about a 15 million year long Sunday drive up PCH, and it's only gotten this far. It hasn't even hit Oregon yet. So, you know, don't drive too fast here, pal. The San Andreas Fault explains everything about Bodega Bay. It explains why it has such a elongated appearance in the harbor, and it explains why you have two very different rock types so close to each other. It also means that right where we're standing right now is one plate that extends all the way that way to Japan. And if we go right where we were just uh, less than an hour ago, and only about a mile away from here or so, uh, is another huge body of mass, the, the North American plate that goes all the way to Iceland. And we're right here on the cusp between them, which I think is pretty cool. Last but not least, I drove my wife and dog out to the middle of nowhere just for us to see rocks of the Coast Range Ophelite, which are ultra mafic! The reason I'm stoked to see this rock is because it gives us an idea what the inside of the mantle looks like. Geology story time. Millions of years ago, well before the San Andreas Fault existed and the plate boundary here was a transform boundary, this used to be a subduction zone where oceanic crust was being pushed up and driven into the continental crust of North America. This rock is oceanic crust that somehow escaped a certain death 
for most oceanic crust in the subduction zone, which normally gets makes the equivalent of a fiery hellish um, inferno as it gets subducted down and melts down into magmatic goo. Instead, this lucky guy right here somehow got abducted, and not abducted like, ah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get you, but abducted, kind of glommed onto the continental crust and somehow got stuck onto the Franciscan complex that's all around here, while the rest of the oceanic rock um, subducted and went away. So this rock right here, this guy, it's a survivor, all right? This is stuff that, that you know, um, it, it's been through. It got metamorphosed, it got serpentinized, but, uh, but it's still looking good after probably 100 million years. Thanks for watching, and make sure to subscribe to Poop the Archaeology for more videos about the past.